Sports Center. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Colonial Sports Center. I'm Cam. This is Cam. We're the Cams. It's the Cam Show. With how jam-packed Colonial Sports Center has been the past couple of weeks, this is going to seem like a little bit of a lighter show. But regardless, tons of Colonial Sports in action this week. What happened, Cam? Well, Cam Wickline, we had a lot going on on the court. Basketball was in full swing of things. Women's basketball took the court early on Wednesday morning to take on Akron Zips. Cam, you want to break that down for us, how that game went? Yes, I do. This is the first time, this is the third time in the last three years that Akron has played the Colonials. This one at the Colonials court at the UPMC Event Center. Let's take a look at how that went. Last year when Akron played the Colonials, they won 68 to 50. So the Colonials are looking for a little bit better luck this year. Pick it up in the first quarter. Luella Alana is going to look to take a shot here. It's, she's going to miss. Get her own rebound after it goes out. Doesn't usually get rebounds that deep, but she's going to kick it over to Madison Odell, and she gets the three. The Colonials up early, 12-9. Now in. kick it up to the second quarter. Danny Volatich is going to set a ball screen here for Madison Odell. He's going to take the three, miss. Danny gets the rebound, though. Goes up tough for the layup. Danny looking big. You can see her there. She's all kinds of excited. Yeah, one of the most exciting players on the court. Yeah, now Reagan Bass gets a rebound off of Madison Odell. Miss finds Morgan Haney. And for a fast break buzzer beater, the Akron Zips are going to go into halftime up 29 to 26. Calling bank on that one. Yes, the Akron Zips still in a tight game with Robert Morris. Simone Morris step back three here, and she drains it from deep. Check this one out. Oh my, a little, little ring around the rosy of the rim. That was beautiful. Simone Morris finding that one from deep. Now, staying in the third quarter, Daniel Volatich to Luella Alana for three. The Colonials go up by one of the biggest leads they'd have all day, 43-38. Now into the fourth quarter crunch time, Simone Morris going to do something you can't do in crunch time here. She's going to turn the ball over. Zakis Rashid dumps it to Lisa Tampkin, and you're going to see a nice little layup here for the Akron Zips, and that was going to give them the lead late in the fourth quarter, just a little under five minutes left in the game. Now, Alana is going to dump it to Duomo. Duomo with a quick pass into Danny, bangs around, big body in, and she's going to get a little hook shot to go for the Colonials. 55-55 right at the end of the game. Madison Odell with a shot to win it, misses right off the front of the iron. That one hurts for the Colonials. They're going to go into OT, and unfortunately for the Colonials, not much went right in this. Alexis Mobley going to pretty much put the dagger in it here with this layup. They would end up losing 63-58. to Reagan Bass went off for Akron with 22 points and 19 rebounds. Yeah, they had that look that they wanted, but we're going to move earlier in the season to their second game as they took on St. Bonaventure Bonnies. Let's see how this game resulted for the Colonials. And you see right here, 70 to 52, unfortunately dropping this game. Simone Moore, 17 points. Three for five from the three point line. Naomi Barnwell, 14 points. She led the team in scoring in that Akron game. And they just could not stop Danny Haskell with 23 points for them. That is a tough, unfortunate start to their season. One and two to start their year. But Cam, there's another basketball team on campus going all over the place, and we may have been following them along. You and I have been busy <laughs> men. We went up to Towson with our beautiful producer, Michael Deemer, to watch the Colonials take on Towson. Let's take a look at that. Welcome to Baltimore, as CSN is on the road once again here at the TU Arena, as men's basketball is here to face the Tigers in a non-conference matchup. Your Towson Tigers! The Robert Morris men's basketball team took the trip to Charm City Sunday night and faced off against the Towson Tigers for the first time since 2016. A positive sign to see was Justice Williams making his return to the lineup. The LSU transfer sat out in the win against Point Park due to a foot injury. The Tigers were led by graduate senior big man Charles Thompson. He had 14 of the Tigers' 42 points in the paint. The Colonials struggled shooting the ball in the first half, hitting only 9 buckets with 4 of them being from 3-point land. 
Sophomore TJ Wainwright had come off a career high in points against Point Park. He had 13 points and two three-pointers, including this bucket, with 10 minutes to go to cut the deficit to one. With just four minutes to go, Marquise Hastings hit this turnaround jumper to give the Colonials their first lead since it was 9-8 in the first half. However, with less than a minute to go, Tiger sophomore Christian May rebounded his own miss and then laid it in to give Towson the lead back. That would end up being the difference as the Colonials fell to the Tigers 66-62. Uh, just came down to one or two plays that we couldn't make, and uh, Towson's really well coached. Obviously, they did a great job of pounding the ball in the paint. We knew that was going to be part of their game plan. Uh, we weren't able to execute our defensive game plan well enough against them, and they were really able to just out physical us in the paint. And so, um, you know, we had some chances, we had some opportunities. I thought we got some good shots down the stretch, uh, but we're not unable to kind of get enough of them or get the stops we needed to be able to pull the one. I think we got to just continue to stay more engaged with some of the details uh, because those are really the differences between winning and losing, right? And that's where, you know, the challenge and the, and the, and the frustration comes is because, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're discussing and talking about on a daily basis in practice, you know, we still haven't fully grasped. And obviously we're three games into the year, so we still have time to continue to grasp it, but we'd like it to be right away, right? A lot of coaches don't have a lot of patience, so we're trying to urge those guys to be uh, as detailed as possible now. As the Colonials drop this one in heartbreaking fashion, they drop the one and two on the year, and they will face Wisconsin in Madison on Friday night. Reporting for Colonial Sports Network, I'm Michael Diemer. Thank you for that look in, Michael. Now, 18 hours between Xavier and Towson, Colonial Sports Center has been everywhere. Yes, but we haven't been the only ones doing a lot of travel as men's ice hockey went all the way to Alaska, and that is coming up just after this short break, so you want to stay here on Colonial Sports Center. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day of a turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 I could go back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Well, welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. We have more games and more action to hop right into. We're going to start off at Joe Walton Stadium, where RMU football was in action. Cam, break it down for us. Wild one for the Colonials. They came into this one having won the week before. Could the Colonials win two in a row? It would be mind-boggling if they could. Let's see. Let's take a look at how it went when the Colonials took on Charleston Southern at the Joe. Pick it up in the first quarter, and I don't think this is the start the Colonials were looking for. Is Tannis Lukowski is going to throw an interception here on, honestly, a ball that didn't look like it was going towards any Colonials in the first place. Yeah, you'll see here Dominic P uh, Pagano was our player to watch, and that would be his first of the day. We may see another one later. You see, check this out, getting up. Didn't want any help. And then you always hear about wanting to make big plays off of turnovers, big splash plays. Isaiah Best is going to roll out, find Noah Jennings, 58 yards down the field. Oh, my goodness. Man, what a play. Hey, this is my shot on the shoulder cam this game. You see the QB rolling out right, letting that play develop, finding that receiver deep. And that was a pretty good follow, I must say so myself. Just not at all with the Colonials. Wanted. Now into the second quarter. He is going to throw another interception, Tyler Sikowski that is, 
This time, Dominic Pagano, just not great, or my apologies, we are in the third quarter, just not a great start for the Colonials. Still zero points after halftime. Yeah, right there, about to get into the red zone. Same spot. You see Slikowski takes a shot on that one. Second interception of the day for Pagano, and the worst that would part, be the end of the day for him. The worst part about that, Slikowski did get an interception. Although, Zach Tanner may say, not the worst thing in the world. Obviously, you never want an injury, but Zach Tanner comes in immediately looking to make a difference. First play of the fourth quarter, runs for 18 yards, gets the Colonials down to the eight, and will eventually be a touchdown scoring drive for the Colonials, and that would give them the lead seven to six by the time this drive was over. Yeah, Tanner making the most of his opportunity, waiting behind two other quarterbacks so far this season. Zach Tanner says, I'm not done yet. I can run, baby. Woo! There's a little move. Beautiful by Zach Tanner. Dies for the pylon. He gets in again. This time a 25-yard touchdown. He's, where has he been? How's he been on the bench? It's a totally different offense with him running it. A lot, of, a lot of passing whenever the other two quarterbacks are in there. This guy is proving that he can get the legs moving. There he goes for a 25-yard touchdown. I got real scared with throwing up the peace sign early before crossing that goal line. A little bit of do or die for Charleston Southern, and they are going to do instead of die. 38-yard touchdown by Noah Jennings. This is the second big play of the game. He is the same guy that caught that massive 58-yard pass earlier in the game. Charleston Southern saying, hey, we're not done yet. We're just going to fake a little handoff, find a guy right out in the flats, and he's going to say, I'm faster than you, Colonials, and he's going to sprint down the sidelines for the touchdown, 14-12. to 12. This essentially decides the game. Isaiah Bass going to run, try to get to the end zone, and get stuffed by multiple Colonial defenders. That would essentially decide the game. Here it is late, fourth, fourth and four with a minute, a little over a minute left in the fourth quarter. Isaiah Bass looking to make something happen. The Colonials stuff him on fourth down. That would be the end of the game. The Colonials win 14 to 12. Zach Tanner, four for seven completions, but he went very crazy on the ground. 41 yards rushing and the two touchdowns. Robert Morris now not in the bottom of the standings of the Big South OVC, which is not something you could have said as of last year, meaning that there is improvement going on with this Colonials team. They are an upward trajectory, something you love to see. Four and six overall this year. Yeah, I mean, they've put together some really good games recently, beating the top teams and then coming home and beating um, – who they just beat, I can't remember. Charleston Southern. Charleston Southern. Man, it was an intense game, hard physical action, a lot to uh, take just in. Just a lot, a lot to like from <laughs> yeah. the Colonials so far this year. After having, which everyone in the program would tell you was a pretty hard season last year, four and six, things are going places. Yeah, I, I mean, mean th that's, it's going places. Yeah, it's real good. Well, we're talking about travel a lot. Ten hours away from the state of Pennsylvania, RMU Hockey traveled the whole way to Alaska Anchorage to take on the Sea Wolves in some hockey. Let's take a look at game one of this, and we're going to start off, as I said, 10 hours away. Man, that doesn't seem like, oh, it's how well, much with the 18 hours we've driven <laughs> in the last week. And we start off here. Gunnar Van Dam with a high hit on Luke Johnson would end his night and Unfortunately, it was not the end of the night for Luke Johnson, but Van Dam gone from this game. But we'll start here. Face off one by the Colonials, but Maximum Helgensen dives to open the scoring. What a freak play. Yeah, you don't see that often. You see the Colonials win. Somehow Alaska Anchorage comes up with it and scores. I, I don't even know how that happened. One hand that just swipes under the stick. We're going to move to the second period and you're going to see Thompson Riley to Brett Bamber and Matt Allen on the doorstep, knocking on the glass and on the doorstep. Take another look here. Pass, puck, Shot, rebound, tapped in, easy goal. From the Colonials, you can't let a guy open in the slot like that. Big first mistake, second mistake, not controlling the rebound. Colonials killing off a penalty here. Do just that, and fresh out of the box comes Gavin Goulash coming in, backhand into the net to cut the lead to one. Remember that move, backhand underneath the glove side. You might see it later in game two. This is a beautiful goal. Ten bucks, Cam, you owe me if we see this goal again. <laughs> well, man. <laughs> 
we come here in the third period. Colonials face off goes outside the zone and they take the quick, quick rush back in. McKee Hayes shot off pad to Tanner Klimke who buries it to tie this game up with nine minutes remaining. But quickly, here we go, 10 seconds remaining. Brett Bamber on the goal line scores to take this game. It goes under review to make sure there's enough time. Good goal, that's it. Alaska Anchorage three to two final. Cam, I want to hear how they did the next day. Exactly. If you use your noggin, Cam said game one, meaning there must be a game two. The Colonials took on Alaska Anchorage the very next day. Let's see how that one went. Picking it up in the first quarter. This one's going to be a little bit tough to see. The first highlight you guys are going to see, watch along the boards here. Just watch. This one's going to be tough to see, but it's going to end up being a loose puck. And somehow Logan Ganey's going to come up with it. And he's going to take a shot, a little bit of a screen by Cam Garvey, but the Colonials score the first goal early, just about a minute and a half into the game. Yeah, I thought it would go to the guy wide open in front, but it just found its way right in. More of a screen. Now, Colonials on the power play. Tanner Klimke is going to find Dallas Tolick wide open in the slot, takes a shot, beats the Tendi high glove side. Beautiful shot. You know, as they say, right where mama hides the sweet cookies, exactly. peanut butter, something like that. Now Alaska Anchorage on the power play, scramble in front of the net, goal for Brett Bomber. I don't know how it found him, big scramble. We just talked about not being able to control the rebound in the last game, huge part of hockey, and the Colonials could not execute there. Veltrude now, would leave the game after that goal. In the, Veltrude would come in, sorry. Into the third quarter, Army's going to try to clear here. Dallas Goler takes a shot. Adam Tisdale deflects it, and he's going to get credit for the goal on the deflection. Tie game. Colonials looked like they had it early. Not so much anymore. Going into overtime. Overtime didn't have much going on. Into the shootout. Logan Ganey goes forehand, backhand. Beautiful goal. Oh, my goodness. Now, Cantor McNarland beats Chad Veltry, high blocker here. This would tie up the shootout 1-1, both teams only taking one shot. But Gavin Goulash says, I feel like I might want to call game. Here we go. Just honestly beats him in the waiting game. Now, last, goal, last shot attempt for Alaska Anchorage gets stuffed. The Colonials would end up winning the shootout final score still two to two because hockey has very weird weird roles you know we saw that up in erie when we traveled there <laughs> earlier this season the clothes had that happen a lot this year. yeah but it was some good play that backhand we saw it again man what action from the colonials hockey team good to see them back in action well when we come back we got some volleyball and cross country waiting for you those seasons were coming to an end so stay here to find out what happened on colonial sports center I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Thanks, kid. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Hello and welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Now, Cam, you're a college student. I honestly couldn't tell you why. It seems like you have a future as a professional driver. You went up to Youngstown State for another trip. Take me through that. Yes, that one hour drive felt like only 20 minutes to catch up on the season finale for Robert Morris Volleyball. Let's take a look at how they fared against the Penguins 
and this one did not go the Colonials way. Three sets to none after a thriller against the Penguins earlier this year at the UPNC Event Center. You see Abby Householder with 13 kills and 15 digs just dominated for the Penguins. You'll see Hillary Adams, eight kills, Ashley Wall and 11 assists, and Rosina Esposito with 12 digs. That would be the end of the season for the Colonials. Not much happening that day. Not a lot brewing for them. 25-19, 25-15, and another 25-15. It was a quick trip for us. We were down and back back home before midnight, unlike the 4 a.m. arrivals <laughs> like us. Now, Cam, Cross Country was in action as well to end their seasons. How did that one go? Cross Country finished their season with their regional appearances. They, starting with the men's side, they did not fare all that well. They finished 18th in the event. A. They ended up, you, as you're going to see here, no one did particularly great, and probably why they ended up finishing 18th. Colton Morris with a time of 31.45 was the best for the Colonials. Just to give you some reference, the winner of the event was over two and a half minutes better. Liam Murphy out of Villanova ran 29.05. Villanova ended up coming in third in the event. Princeton for men's won this event. So the Colonials got a little bit of work to do in the offseason. As for the women's, they would end up coming in 27. Ooh. Julia Dill had the best time for the Colonials, 22-28. For reference, the winner, Sadie Sigfed from Villanova, ran 1938. Or 35, excuse me. So again, ugh. Colonials struggled a little bit in this one. Georgetown would end up getting the victory. The Colonials facing bigger schools than what Robert Morris is, so a lot of struggles could have been expected. And relatively new programs. Men, uh, men's cross country coming back recently, women's cross country back recently. We'll, we'll see if the track and field side in the spring can pick it up for them, because I know that's been more established the for the team. The Colonials track and field has definitely been a little better over the last couple of years. I can't wait to see that in the spring. Yes, and men's is coming soon, I believe. That's possibly. That's, possibly. that's possibly. the rumor. That's the that's rumor. rumors. Those Not are official. Hot, 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 hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> but for all the travel news, you can check out Colonial Sports Network to see where we have gone all across the uh, mid-Atlantic. Check out articles, podcasts, recaps, and featured stories. Everything you need to know about Robert Morris Athletics. Cam, check out CSN. I'd say check out CSN. I check out CSN for all of my colonial sports needs. I'd say, why, why shouldn't you guys? But coming up, it is my favorite time of the show. Top five plays and a little bit more coming up after the break here on CSN. Oh, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Holiday season is right around the corner, but what season is right here, right now, and ready to go? Top five plays, Cam. I am hype. It's a great time of the year. Top five plays, <laughs> my favorite part of Colonial Sports Center. The reason I show up every week, if you want me to be completely honest with you, Cam, take it away. Yes, let's hop right into it. Number five, 
we are on the court in Towson and we'll see some amazing ball movement. Hey, I also took this video, but <laughs> back to the actual things that matter. This play, passing it around. You can go on Army Basketball's Instagram to see the breakdown of this play, but Jackson last. Great passing for the three points. Take another look at this pass. Jump, catches it right into the three-pointer. As you mentioned, Army Basketball did a coach told teaching segment. I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it was a fantastic watch. You guys should all go see it. But we saw this play a little earlier when Danny set a ball screen with a little lot of miss. Danny gets her own board. Beautiful. She's hyped. Big body down low says, no one can mess with me. That's the Danny Voletic we all love to see and why we like watching Colonials basketball. Danny Voletic is all the energy you could ever want. Oh my God, I could watch it over and over again. Cams couldn't have said it better than that, I think. Number three, we saw this one. Gavin Goulash on the breakaway. Fake that shot, backhand underneath the glove of Jared Whale and take another look at this, we'll zoom in. Fake that shot, get him biting, moving that goalie out of position and just beating him. Now on to the number two play of the week. Tanner Klimke gonna take a shot near side, beautiful. It's, oh my God, the Colonials are playing great hockey right now. They would end up winning this game in Alaska Anchorage off a little deflection. Beautiful goal by the Colonials. Now, number one. Let's see, we're at Joe Walton Stadium. You saw this one earlier. Tanner takes a snap, gets the pressure. We're going, as our producer uh, Michael Deemer would like, Lamar Jackson-esque, throwing up the peace sign just before getting into the end zone, using those legs to beat him. And that would be the game-winning touchdown. Take another look. Step back. Red Seas part. Yay! <laughs> Putting that foot down and throwing up the peace sign, saying goodbye to Charleston Southern. Beautiful play by Zach Tanner. Something we haven't seen from a ton of Colonials quarterbacks is the running game. Pretty refreshing to watch. The, from the, the run game in general with the Robert Morris football team, not a lot of rushing touchdowns so far this season. Refreshing, as you said, to see them do. But we got what's coming up next. Games to watch. Cam, what is your game to watch? All right, crucify me if you want. I got games to watch, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I thought it was a great opportunity. The big one that I'm really looking forward to is the fact that Fairleigh Dickinson University is coming into town to take on the Colonials, but so is Jacksonville in the Urban Bennett Memorial Classic. Both teams will be here. It's kind of like a round robin between all three. I'm really excited to watch the Colonials play in these games over break, but the big thing that I'm looking forward to watch is Josh Corbin. He's been out since the Xavier game, the first game of the year for the Colonials. And honestly, watching all the games, the Colonials have not been the same team without it. Josh Gordon brings a lot of it outside shooting. So if uh, the biggest thing to watch is just if he plays or not. Regardless, Justice Williams has been an absolute dog so far this year. Brought him in from LSU, averaging 18 and a half points per game. And honestly, when I'm watching the game, it feels like he's averaging 50. He's taking a ton of shots, and he's making a ton of shots. Big impact player for the Colonials. Yeah, you can't miss him on the court. And when they didn't have him for that Point Park game, his, it was noticeable. Yeah, very noticeable that he wasn't in. But my game to watch is the last game for Robert Morris football this season as they take on Eastern Illinois. You'll see right here, Noah Robinson is my player to watch. 61 reception, 700 30 yards, five touchdowns. My player to watch for Eastern Illinois is their quarterback, Pierce Holly. 60.1 completion percentage, 14 to seven touchdown interception, and throwing 251 yards and a half per game. We'll see how the Robert Morris defense can handle him again, or handle the quarterback, Pierce Holly, and see if they can show up again. Their defense was a huge part of that victory stopping the Charleston Southern at the goal line late, preventing them from tying the game and holding them at the end. Not to quote a movie, but if you win today, that's good. If you win the next game, that's, a, that's very good. If you win three in a row, that's a winning streak. Let's see if the Colonials can get on a winning streak by the end of this week, winning three games in a row. I'm Cam Wickline. This is Cam McCario. 